Hello, in this brief video I'm going to show you how to install a Java development environment uh, in a Fedora Core, as you can see up here, Fedora Core 20 operating system, 32-bit. If you have 64-bit, the process is exactly the same. You will start by going into your browser and going into this URL jdk8.java.net forward slash download.html Alternatively, go in the search toolbar of your browser and type download jdk8 Now you have to select the appropriate version for your operating system. As we mentioned earlier, we will be working with Fedora Core 20 for 32-bit. Make sure you download the JDK versions, not the GRE versions. So for us, we have Linux platform, 32-bit, and the version of the JDK. This is 110.5 megabytes in size. Once the JDK has been downloaded, place it in an appropriate folder. In this instance, we're using a folder called apps. This directory can be found in the home directory of the user R2D2. Once you have the distribution inside the directory, all you have to do is star zxvf jdk8 early access bin etc. This should take just a few seconds and at the end what happens is that you have installed the jdk8 in your system. Now I no longer need the tarball so I'm gonna remove it rm minus f it will force the removal great so now we have uh, Java but um, we have Java installed but we need to fix our path so that we can always invoke Java from our shell to do that let's do the following Let's type VIM. VIM is a shell editor. And we will enter here JDK 8. So now uh, we will save this and we're going to source. the bus RC file but as you see there is no JDK 8 directory so we're going to create a symbolic link And if we type Java this version, as you can see, we get the correct version of Java. Here it is built 1.8.0 early access, built 124. So they, we have installed Java in this Linux operating system. The next thing you want to do is to install Eclipse. We will install Eclipse and we have downloaded here Eclipse Java Kepler and we will perform the same procedure that we did for Java. So tar zxvf Eclipse. Tar is a program that helps you group together files that belong in a particular directory structure. Great. 
So now we can access Eclipse as well and we will test that. Let's remove again the Eclipse Starball since we no longer need it. Keep our system tidy. We'll put an ampersand so it goes to the background and voila. There you go. The Eclipse IDE is asking me what the workspace should uh, I'll select the default. And now I have a integrated development environment to work with and build Java code. To take this one step farther and conclude this session, let's create a Hello World. So you go to Java project, you give a name to the project, let's call it Hello World. I will leave the default location. You could change the location if you wanted to. We will specify the GRE to be 1.8. We'll click Next. Everything looks good. I don't like the output folder to be in bean, so I always change this to build forward slash Eclipse to be more verbose and more specific about it. And now what you would do, you would create a class, a new class, let's call it Hello World. The modifier is public. Uh, it is a normal class that has a main method so we can do something useful with it. And we we'll let Eclipse generate the comments for us. And we'll click Finish to obtain this. Now, this is a perfectly valid Java class. It doesn't do uh, anything useful at this point, but we can fix that by doing the following. As you can see, Eclipse will give you auto-completion, which is a very nice feature. And print a land string, and we will say hello world. Now, the only thing you have to do is save this by going over here and then execute it. You can also press Ctrl S to save a file that has been edited. Now, as you can see, our class executed perfectly. It told us hello world. In the out stream, print stream out, this is the standard output stream, it has printed the string hello world. Now that certainly worked, but it's not very useful. So let's pretend that we give an argument to the class to be executed, and we want to use the argument in the class. So now we have a hello, whatever name we provide when we execute the class. In order to provide arguments to the class that you're going to execute, you have to go into Configurations. Click Run Configurations, and you go into the Arguments. There are two kinds of arguments that you can give to a class that you want to execute. The one is Program Arguments, which is the case here, and let's say Bobby's, and the other is VM Arguments. Okay, so we will apply this, and we will run. And as you can see, we have Hello Bobbies. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.